press the bell icon to never miss an update from placement interviews. My name is Shikha Bhaskar and I'm currently pursuing economics from Shriram College of Commerce. I'm in my final year and I sat for my GRE in October 2017 and I scored a 329 on 340. It was my first attempt. The breakdown was 162 in verbal and 167 in quant and I got a 5 on 6 in the analytical writing section. So when my second year ended in May, I started thinking about how to prepare for my GRE. I spoke to some seniors in my college and they advocated self-prep or um, taking a coaching. Somewhere I thought I'd be better off taking a coaching because there's some sort of support you get. So in May, I decided to join Princeton Review and, um, and since then it's been a great journey. Okay, so um, if you're doing it on your own or you're joining a coaching, they'll give you uh, books. So one will be the coaching institute themselves, their own book. And the second will be the ETS manual, which is the official GRE manual that you will get. There are essentially two sections, uh, quant and verbal. And there's a, a three sections and there's a writing section too. So the first hour is the writing section, which has two essays of half an hour each, which is then followed with five sections. Um, it can three and two, three for one subject and two for the other. So there'll be at least two quant and two verbal sections. And the fifth section will be a surprise. It's an ex it's called an experimental section. And you don't know which out of the five will be an experimental. So you got to give it your best in each section, essentially. So when I joined Princeton, the first thing they made me do was give a GRE mock test. That really helped. And even if you're doing self prep, it's best to give a test when you start, because then you will get an idea of what the paper is like, the duration, um, the sort of questions, where do you stand when you begin. And uh, that test really opened my eyes to how I am to go about it. So in math, there are essentially topics like you can, um, that's how I did it at least. You can divide the whole syllabus down to topics like permutations and combinations, linear algebra, uh, single equations in one variable, two variable, etc. So what helped me was mastering these topics individually. So I focus more on quality than quantity. It wasn't about doing 100 questions under each topic. I knew when I knew one topic really well and then moved on to the next. So for me, I divided math into topics and then approached it. In verbal, there is text completion and, there's, um, and there are passages. So in GRE, you must have heard that you need to really up your vocabulary. And that's extremely important. And in India, we all are somehow always very good at the in the quantitative section, but really lack when it comes to verbal. So I too faced a challenge when it came to verbal. Uh, one severe doubt everyone has is which um, which vocab book to pick up when it comes to uh, GRE. So Princeton has an excellent uh, account called Membean. It's not because I went to Princeton I'm, Princeton, I'm promoting it. I looked at a lot of places at uh, Magoosh or Barron's word list, but it doesn't really stick. Um, whereas Membean, they have a, in Mem, in the, on the account, they have a page for each word. There's a small video, there's a pun or a joke they have made on that word. So that really sticks. And I think if you do Membean, you'll be sorted. Or at the same time, if you do Magoosh, they have levels. You do all of them, you'll be good to go. So in verbal, you really have to balance it out. Initially, when you start text completion questions, you'll not be able to solve any of them. And most of the times you won't even know the options. So don't get discouraged, balance it out. Like initially put a lot of focus on uh, learning words and, and at, but at the same time, keep doing text completion. And eventually you'll come to realize that knowing the words is not enough because there'll be time when you don't even understand which word to put in despite knowing all the options. So you need to maintain a good balance there. And as for um, passages, I think I can divide it out into three, four headings. There are scientific passages, economic passages, um, historical passages, passages related to art and music. So there'll obviously be one area where you're very comfortable in, probably your area of specialization, but the others will probably be very tough. So it's best you start reading some newspaper articles on those issues. Okay, so uh, one advice about the writing section is that uh, whenever we take practice tests, we just skip the writing section and move to uh, practicing the other five. But it's very important that every time we give a mock test, we do the analytical writing bit too, because that one hour really exhausts you and you'll be, your whole mind frame will be different when you attempt that one hour and then attempt the other five versus just skipping that because in the real paper you'll have to give that section too and we all somehow I don't know there's this attitude where we take it, take it very lightly and so did I but it's very important and uh, there's a misconception that colleges don't ask for your analytical writing score but they do and it's definitely evaluated so it'd be um, 
it be a good exercise to at least two three weeks before your paper to start writing at least two or three such um, articles and getting them checked from maybe your mom dad or your english teacher in college or I'll now explain the structure of classes at Princeton. So they give you a book, which is I think there are about seven lessons. There's a main book and there's a supplementary book too. So I had weekly classes. In every class, the teacher would explain one of the lessons, and um, I like the pattern that they followed and how they group topics in math under each lesson. What I did was I uh, attended the classes here. Then the in the coming week, I'd do the supplementary, which had tougher questions. and that this is how it went and what really helped was the portal that they gave me access to it had a lot of drills but the prime thing really was being able to approach the teachers even after class and my coaching ended somewhere in july and i gave my gre in october but throughout september the teachers were easily accessible and they kept solving my doubts even on whatsapp so that was one pl big plus point of taking coaching here further on the princeton portal there are about eight practice papers which i think are a good um, A reflection of the main GRE, I would say the quant is a little easier in the Princeton papers compared to what you actually face. In order to get a true reflection of the paper, you should attempt the two papers that are provided to you by ETS when you register for the test. So this advice that I got when I joined GRE coaching was that one day before the exam do you not meant to study and I was very skeptical about this advice but it actually proved to be very helpful and very true um there is not much that you can do one day before the paper like if you start rather you will tire yourself a lot when you give the GRE you need a lot of concentration and essentially and in the beginning when you take mock tests you will find yourself very exhausted because you'll be staring at the screen for at least 5 hours so one day before the GRE is extremely crucial and there should really be no screen time on that day um it's good to really relax that day but there'll be a lot of anxiety and the main thing about GRE is really just testing your uh, resilience perseverance your mental strength I uh, while at the same time your academic strength so on the day of the paper i had my paper around 10 o'clock um, get a good uh, getting a good night sleep is extremely important because again 5 hours staring at the screen and if you're tired the numbers will literally jumble up in front of you so yeah you just have to control your stress that day and um, it'll be a very smooth it's a very smooth process you one document that you need to get is your passport and then you sit for the paper and um, one thing that like i this is advice i give to my friends who are attempting the gre is that when you are attempting sections don't think that you're messing up because that will have a consequence on your next section try to attempt all sections independently of each other and really keep going because if you think you're messing up you will most likely mess up the next section too and you never know it could be an experimental section and the marks won't count at all So yeah it's just mental strength that you really need during the paper because that are provided to you by ETS when you register for the test So I don't think I'm the best judge in telling you which is the best but the I can talk about the ones that I used um I stuck to the content that Princeton gave me and additionally the book official guide that is provided by ETS and I would say that suffice there was always this doubt that should I do something extra will it help it really depends on um, how it's a very personal thing like if you're not very good at verbal and you think you need more help and you have exhausted all of print content but you want to attempt a higher level then you can maybe look at manhattan or else i think this is more than enough and you're good to go with this content um for uh, voc for vocabulary as i said uh, you can subscribe to membean is and when you give a lot of mock tests you will again come across a lot of new words and i'm sure if you do these word lists you will know about these words you can again download apps so that when you're traveling you can look at the word lists and this is about it So I recently became familiar with the content of placement interview and uh, this is one interview I'm giving for this channel and I feel it's a great initiative and if you I think even when I was giving my GRE throughout I was like whenever I was free I used to google how to prepare for the GRE how can I do better and I would really not know where can I find some really good advice and I think this is one channel that's really providing you that advice and the best part is that it's not just on GRE but like various uh, other exams that you might face in life So it's a great initiative and I really think you guys should keep coming to this channel and definitely subscribe to it.